Hi guys, my name's Lamont. Welcome to Days of French and Swedish. It's a channel about learning languages. And today's video is a collaboration with Swiss YouTuber Anita. And what we decided to do was to quiz each other on each of our countries. So Anita will be answering questions about Australia and I'll be answering questions about Switzerland. And so there's also some fun little challenges like me trying to sound like a Swiss German later in the video. Spoiler alert, it doesn't go well. If you enjoy this, then make sure to check out Anita's half of the video, which will contain more questions, more challenges, and Anita trying to sound Australian. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's do it. Okay, cool. Okay, you ready for questions? Yeah. Okay, so. Is this Australian name real or did I make it up? Wonga Willy. And it is spelled... Can you repeat it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wonga Willy. And it is spelled like this. Mm, I want to say it's real. It is, correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is actually okay. a suburb of my city. Now it's my turn. So, is this Swiss place name real? Arschwald. That doesn't sound crazy enough to be made up. I'm going to say that that's real. It is, yeah. Do you know what any of the two words mean that I combined? Arschwald. Uh, no. Okay, so in German, Wald means forest. Okay. And Arsch... Arsch um means as, but uh, this word actually comes from um, Romansh and has a Latin origin, which um, so it originates from the word arsus, which means burnt, so burnt forest. Okay. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but... So, are you saying that it it sounds like the German for ass forest, or yeah. as? Okay, so I didn't consider the meaning of it properly, but I just said it sounded real. So, it's <laughs> one of these three place names is not real, and the other two mm -hmm. are real. Uh, A. Humpy Bong. B. Gimme Gara. C. You Potty Pot Pon. So. Um, A, Humpy Bong, B, Gimme Gara, C, You Potty Pot Pon. Okay, I'm gonna go with B. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is the one that is incorrect. <laughs> Very good. That's that's um, made up. How did you know that? <laughs> I, I made a typo on, um, on Humpy Bong, but I would have corrected any of them anyway because I kind of okay. made up this fake spelling for Gimme Gara. Um, yeah. But that's like a very, no Gimme Gara is a very normal Australian sounding town. It just happens to be made up in this instance. Oh, okay. okay. So that yeah. was um, a lucky, lucky guess then. <laughs> <laughs> so which of these three Swiss place names is not real? A. Better Kinden. B. B Teichbach. Or C. Rotzenwil. Should I write it for you, or? Um, well, I mean, they all seem equal. Like, well, no, Better Kinden seems like it. It's like the red herring that that the one that I w should think is fake, but isn't because it. I think it means better children. Um, but I don't know what the other two mean. So they could, like, they might mean the my, most outrageous thing in German, but I wouldn't <laughs> know. Um, I'm going to say that Rotzendil is the fake one. No, no it's, it's actually Teichbach. Okay. That's the fake one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so what does, not... what's the go with that? Like, why is that even weird? Because they just seem to be normal to me. Yeah, I mean, I mean honestly, honestly, I just try to find something that doesn't actually exist, and Teichbach actually exists in Germany, so I'm not even that creative, honestly. <laughs> like, I, it, well, I had such a hard time to 
find something that doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. What do you mean? Yeah, that's, you can't look for stuff that doesn't exist. That's not you, You're not going to find anything. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I just meant to make them up. Um, Rots and Veal, the one you thought was yeah. wrong. Yeah. The funny thing is that Rots means um, snot. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, I kind of see why you would think that that one is fake. I guess like German speakers would also think that that could be fake. Yeah, but so, I yeah. just I just thought actually to me that one seemed like the most normal one, and therefore the fake uh, one. Okay. Like we know that Anita speaks English quite well, um, but now we're like going to really put her English to the test um, and ask her about a word that most native speakers probably don't know. Um, but you get an A, B, or C for this, so there's a, it's okay. a multiple choice. So, the, mm -hmm. wait, I'll write it down first. The English word meretricious mm -hmm. means A, describing something that is awarded without being deserved, e.g., while staying in England, Anita topped the class in German as a second language, but the award was meretricious since she was, in fact, a native speaker. Uh, mm -hmm. B, normally describing real estate and describing a value that is directly related to being near the ocean. Example, the apartments in Sydney Harbour are, in fact, small and unattractive, but they have huge meretricious value. Or C, appearing to be attractive or aesthetically pleasing but having no real substance. For example, the shopping arcade was lined with fast food counters and cheap jewellery stores that were full of meretricious necklaces and earrings. Um, I'm going to go with the first one. Describing something that is awarded without being deserved. Um, no, it's, it's the last oh, one. It's, it's the last it, one. Really? Okay. So, uh, yeah. okay. I think it does have, like, did you go for the first one because of the word merit? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it somehow has its roots in that. Um, it's somehow like, it is sort of to do with like not deserving something, but it's more like appearing out, mm -hmm. outwardly pleasing but not actually having any substance so like um actually people can be described as meretricious if they're like uh you know if they wear nice clothes and stuff but they're like really nasty or boring oh, okay. yep um, i'm writing that down <laughs> are they like i knew of the word but i didn't actually know what it meant so i decided to look it up and i was like ah that's a good word i should use that more often even though no one yeah. knows what it means <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah that's good yeah yep yeah. i was the uh the, the thing of normally of real estate describing a value that is directly related to being near the ocean i was just thinking like what else could mer mean um mm -hmm. so like mer like the ocean uh, <laughs> that was my other uh, okay yeah no i didn't really think that yeah. that one was true so. No, no. <laughs> so you know that switzerland has four official languages yes. okay and there are also quite a few foreigners living in switzerland yes. so the question is how many people that are above the age of 15 um, speak more than one language on a regular basis and you can just give me a rough percentage you think um, that could be true. So including the whole population above 15? Yeah. Oh, on a regular basis. Um, 40%. Forty-two point six. Oh, that's pretty close then. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Um, so I asked um, my parents this or other people they thought it was way above because obviously there are so many people um, that have a foreign background and you would think that uh, because we have to learn English and a second uh, national language, mm -hmm. 
people would use it more often, but yeah, yeah it's, it's not, not even half. No, half. well, like on a on a regular basis, to me, really yeah. changes that question quite. It's because it's like I know that more more than forty percent of people would speak a second language, but yeah. not, not like on a regular basis. That's like quite a different thing. Yeah. I would, I would say, say I speak more than one language on a regular basis, obviously. Yeah, but but, um, yeah. Yeah. Most, most people are not vloggers, though. Roughly how far over its budget did the completion of the Sydney Opera House go? Um, and to give you an idea, so you can, you can estimate in percent or in, like, actual dollars, but um, yeah. its original budget for completion was £3.5 million pounds. Um, in, in 1963. So, uh, okay. Like, um, yeah, so, but I'll give you a clue. It went over, right? But, like, how far over budget did it go? Fifty percent? <laughs> Keep going. hundred <laughs> percent? Okay, I'm gonna just shut it down right there. It so three point five million pounds was its original budget. It eventually yeah. finished um, so much later that we had changed currency by that point. Yeah. Um, but if if we were to describe it in its original amount, it was forty seven million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so it wow. was almost fourteen times its original budget. Wow, someone, someone didn't do their homework, <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was, it finished 10 years late, um, it was like first planned in 1957 for completion <laughs> in 1963, and it finished yeah. in 1973, um, so Australia by that point had been on to decimal currency for quite some time, so mm -hmm. e even working out exactly what it how much more it did cost was a challenge because they were like, well, three years into building it, we changed mm -hmm. from pounds to dollars. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay, well, that's, that's insane. insane. Yeah. 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 So, name one famous Swiss athlete. Oh, I, I, I feel like that's... <laughs> My my prepared Swiss impression later is of Roger Federer. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say Roger Federer and Martina Hingis. Oh, very good. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Um, yeah. Um, I don't think I can name any others. I'm guessing a lot of the rest of them, other, there'd be like a lot of tennis players and a lot of skiers. and. Yeah. 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 So basically all smartphones, laptops, tablets, and other smart devices like smart TVs, for example, have in them which Australian invention? Oh, yeah, like I don't really know what <laughs> um, Well, you can just take a guess. What would those all have in them that it's kind of, they kind of almost need to have this to be considered smart devices? You're probably um, you're probably using it on your laptop right now, assuming you're not plugged in to the modem. Oh, um, wireless internet. Yeah, Wi-Fi. Uh, wi oh, really? That yeah. came from Australia. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. It came out of a research, like a government-funded research thing called the CSIRO. Um, oh, and actually, okay. I, I believe that they successfully sued Apple and Samsung um, yeah. because Apple and Samsung, Apple and somebody, because both of the companies yeah. just went like, oh, that's really cool. We're going to put it in our new yeah. devices. And yeah. it was like they didn't get permission or anything. So the mm -hmm. CSIRO that the company um, were like, hey, that's our invention and you're using it in your thing. So that's like, um, I think Australia still makes a fair bit of money from that because like every device ever that has Wi-Fi in it mm -hmm. has to pay pay for the patent. 
yeah. on that. So um, the last question I have for you in this part is, why is the country code for Switzerland CH? Oh. But you know that that's our country code. I right? had I had seen it around, yeah, but no, I thought it. Um, I I think if you'd asked me what the country code is, I would have said uh, S U I, something to do with the pronunciation of Switzerland, in when when said by and like when they when they said it to like I don't know some English people on the radio or something they just wrote down C H V or something I don't know. I'm going to say it was a miscommunication mm -hmm. with with some anglophones, um, okay. like like aluminum um, for America. For like, I'm gonna I I reckon it's something the same kind of thing as aluminum and aluminium. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. no. So um, the, the thing is, Switzerland, like, like I said, said, has four official languages, mm -hmm. and, and they, they didn't want to um prefer one to the others. others. Yeah. So they chose the Latin name for the Swiss Confederation, which is Confederatio Helvetica, CH, for our codes. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now yeah. I'm really curious about Helvetica, um, because that's like quite a popular font that designers are pretty keen on. Um. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I use that one as well. Yeah. So yeah, that one's uh, from Switzerland, yeah. Oh, is it? Like the, yeah, the designers so. of it are Swiss. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Helvetica was originally designed in 1957 by Swiss typeface designer Max Mietinger. Sample for Le Mans. That's what I want. And now it's not quite sportish to be in the Jufna, the Lendidina Bassa, the Fna. Pels Jukes Olympics a Sochi as a Lediasa qualificada, a Dalax as a Ina de las Favoritas, per la concurrenza el Slopestyle, que sonda. Chicola ai. La Cetrina Josti è un tupade con ella. Per me è quello che ho visto in tutto il paese del mondo. Ok, do I have multiple choice or do I just have to guess what language is it? What language it is? Uh, I have three options. Yeah. So, is this A, Romanian, mm -hmm. B, Romansh, or C, Catalan? Wow, that was not what I was <laughs> expecting. It sounds Germanic, like it. It sounds almost like Dutch or Flemish. Um, we, we, well, okay. like to a me, it's Italian. So yeah. Porenza el slop style che sonda. Chicola ai. Okay. At the risk of seeming of sounding like a total idiot, I'm going to eliminate Catalan straight away, um, because mm -hmm. I I had a friend who learnt Spanish and she could understand Catalan, and it doesn't yeah. seem close enough to Spanish. So. La Cetrina Josti è un tupade con ella. Per me è quello che ho visto in tutto il paese del mondo. Era con... I'm going to say romance. That's true, yeah. Yes. Now, um... And now I have to try this to sound like Roger Federer. I only prepared this today. <laughs> I didn't really prepare it. Um... Ja, vom Platz danke ich Mangla, Schweizerdeutsch oder Englischmeister. And that's as far as I got. Okay, um, I, I, I didn't really understand the words you were trying to say. <laughs> None of them. <laughs> but but uh, I, from the tone and yeah, that it sounded... Good enough. <laughs> like, it sounded like but, Swiss uh, German, but it wasn't a real language. Um, yeah, 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 but I gotta ask you to um, say a specific word. Mm -hmm. um, Swiss people ask that for us all the time. Yep. And it is Hochichashli. Hochichashli. I, I remember this from your video. Um, yeah. It's like the wor the more I think about it, the worse it gets. Hockey, <laughs> hockey, No, not quite. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's very yeah, yeah prominent and yeah, yeah. very important in the <laughs> So yeah, hockey, 
So there's sort of like two and a half of those sounds, like in my mind, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not bad, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and it means kitchen cupboard. Yeah, yep. exactly. Um, I also came up with this one that's not, this is not going to sound like Swiss German, but it's mm -hmm. just, um, zum Frühstück habe ich ein Gipfeli gegessen. <laughs> That's not bad. I mean, it's more like high German, high German yeah. except for the yeah. Gipfeli, right? Gipfeli, that's yes. very important, yeah. Gipfeli, yeah. yeah. I wanted no, to rehearse I... it better, but I didn't have time. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. So guys, that's it for my half of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember if you did, to go and check out Anita's half of the video, which I'll put in the description. Huge shout out and thank you to her for doing this. It took a very long time. So I'm very pleased that she agreed to do it. It was good fun. Thanks for watching. See you soon.